Hello, hello, hello. How's everyone doing? Thanks for waiting on me for a second. Of course, as soon as I hit go live, I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> of course, that's how that happens. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Move this mic, sorry for making the noise. But still trying out this microphone. Has its advantages and disadvantages. Oh, what's this error on my screen? Please use a keyframe frequency of four seconds or less. Currently, keyframes are not being sent often enough, which can, what? What is, what are you talking about? Huh, I don't know what that is. Interesting. Hey, what's up, hybrid media? Good to see you, brother. Thank you for being here. How you doing? Let me turn my ears up, monitor myself a little better. All right, audio sound good to you? Okie dokie, I'm assuming that um, YouTube in this live stream, oh, actually it may be because my VPN is running. Maybe that's why it's tripping. So let me stop VPN. Probably gonna lose y'all for half a second, so. Oh, come on. There it is. All right. Now it's there. And it says excellent on the screen. That's what it is. All right. So hope y'all are doing well. I am Ant Pruitt, photographer, creator, model, all that good stuff. Uh, this is what I do. And I like to sit down on Fridays or whenever I can. But right now it's started out to be Fridays. Uh, sit down and have a bit of an office hours and take Q&A for people that have questions about um, photography or video or editing or or social or what have you. And um, I said, um, yeah, I'm down for that. So I sit here and just answer questions for people that pop into the live chat. If you're in the live chat right now, I know hybrid media is here. Or if you're on the live stream right now, please do me a favor and hit the uh, like button on side of YouTube. Please, please hit that. And uh, please hit subscribe and hit share, too. So that way it goes out and let other folks know and tell people to join us. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate you um, and your support on it. But this week. Just in case we didn't have any questions, um, I had prepared to discuss uh, pro headshots and that's something that that can go a long way. And the beauty of professional headshots is it's a, it's a tactic that hasn't really changed in a gazillion years. You know, the main thing with shooting headshots for people is you want to be able to to have that image pre present them in a positive light and actually make sure that it still presents their personal brand. You know what I'm saying? So if you stick someone in front of a camera and say smile or don't smile or what have you, that's fine. Uh, that doesn't matter if they don't smile. It doesn't matter if they do smile. But what does matter is do they look like they're getting a headshot or do they look like they're taking a mug shot? You know what I mean? And there's a difference, a big difference. And you can handle a lot of that. Um, you as a photographer, first and foremost, can handle a lot of that with your camera settings, with your lighting, with the uh, the location <laughs> where you shoot the photograph. And then far as the subject matter or the model or whomever that's getting their photograph taken, then it's on them. Their, their posture can make a difference. The facial expression can make a difference. All of that stuff can change that photograph from being a, 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 a mugshot to a headshot. Okay. So 
I had it. I had to update my headshot and I'm going to use update loosely and in quotes. Uh, there was an agency that I was looking at um, trying to work with and they wanted a headshot of me, but they didn't want a professional headshot. They just wanted something quick and dirty. And so what I did is I grabbed my son because he's a photographer. He can shoot. I said, hey, take a picture of me. Let's go stand in front of a white background. Knock this out. Easy peasy. And I sent it to him. And then I said, I, I will take that same image and just use it for myself and some of my profiles that's out there and um, walk through the post processing of it. Because, yes, you can snap headshots and don't do any post processing. But again, all of that depends upon what you're trying to do with that image. Me personally, I have no problem with retouching someone's face, male or female, um, because I think it just looks better. You know, nothing against you, nothing against me. And I'm a damn good looking dude. But even I can use a little retouching every now and then. So that's what we'll do today. Uh, thank you all for being here. So let me see if I could share my screen. Actually, I got too many things open over here. So let me move this like so. Like that there. All right. And it's funny. Um, since I'm doing headshots today, someone that's been popping into the, these office hours here and there. They messaged me this morning because they were on site doing their first corporate headshots. And I'm very, very happy for them. And I hope for the best with them and, you know, offered advice if it was needed. And uh, I'm, I'm just glad to see that people are out there doing their thing. Oh, well, so since um, <laughs> since you just sort of out at yourself you know i didn't want to dox you or anything but my man demancy right here on the screen that's what i was talking about so big dog i'm happy for you I'm, i hope it went well um and i'm i'm hoping that they call you back for the next series the next quarter next round what have you so let's go ahead and pop into my screen here opening up light to room all right so as you can see there's about uh, looks like 17 images down here in the bottom of the screen. And um, ideally, folks, if you don't know, it should not take very long to shoot headshots of any person. It should take you. It'll take you more time in prep for as getting your, your set squared away, getting your your lighting squared away and all of that. But the actual time to click the shutter for headshots should not take you a lot of time, when, especially when you're talking about corporate headshots. It should literally be in and out when it comes to the, the people in there. OK, so at the most, take three photographs, three to four photographs, something like that. Just get them lined up, get them lit, frame it up. You look at it in your view, look at it in your viewfinder before you hit the shutter, guide them on things that. They need to do lift the chin up, stick the neck out a little bit, tilt your head, get the wispies of the hair if possible. Get all of that done. Click done on to the next person. Bring the next person in. So remember that. And I got 17 shots down here on the screen. But I promise you, Hardhead and I were literally in the next room doing this and it took five minutes. If I don't even know if it took five minutes and there's 17 shots in there is because he had my high speed shutter on and he, you know, <laughs> so a bunch of them popped up, you know, because I think my camera does like 15 frames a second or something like that. I don't know, but I didn't need I didn't need 17 shots is the point I'm trying to make. So I called through these and I've already done one. Um, if you look right there, you can see the icon is a little bit different. Those of our that's already been worked on, and that's actually what's in place on one of my profiles. But I said, let's just work on another one for the heck of it, for kicks and giggles and just walk you through my process with this thing. All right. So first thing I look at is just the actual exposure of it. And I'm looking over here at my histogram on the upper right corner. 
uh, as you can see, this thing is really, really, really <laughs> exposed for white over here. I'm wearing a semi white sweatshirt on a white background. And over here on the left, there's a big, huge, um, what do you call it? Sliding door, uh, glass sliding door. So the sunlight is coming in. This is all just regular natural light. There's no studio lights happening. So this big, big, big light source over there. And my histogram is definitely reflecting that big, big light source. So we need to go in here and change this exposure and just pull it back some like that. But now I'm a little bit underexposed. So there's some other things to address here because there's a little too much shadow looking at it on my screen. There's a little too much shadow on this side. So I'm going to hit to the hit the shadows slider and pull that up some. So now I have a little bit of fill on the opposite side of my face and rounds it out. And don't get me wrong. Again, it, it depends on the shot. It depends on the purpose of the shot. Uh, personally, I enjoy low key lighting. I enjoy having shadows on the face, you know, and because I think shadows on the face help shape the face and Sometimes those shadows can can give you a whole different vibe as far as a sort of moody look. And then there's other times it's just it, it, you can just use them to make the, the subject stand out a little bit more because it gives you gives you different levels of definition. But in this instance, I don't want the shadows. I want it to be a little bit more flatter lighting. But otherwise, I'm totally fine with that because it almost looks like split lighting. If you look here. The lighting is just coming straight down one side of my face and then there's a direct line split in my face and it starts to fall off into shadow over there, which is cool depending on what you want to do. Like if this was black and white and then I did something like this, you know, it's a whole different look and a whole different style. And if I crop that in, it's a whole different style. So but we don't want to do black and white. So let's take that back and fix this to where I wanted it to be. So it's not overexposed, not high contrast. And we got some feel light back in there. Okay. So yeah, we're good to go. Ford pops in. Hey Ford, good to see you. Happy Friday. They say Ford, please hit the uh, like and uh, subscribe button since you're in here. Thanks for popping in. So next, I want to take a look at white balance here, which should be pretty easy. Um, looks like it's automatically grabbed at the 5400, which makes sense. Daylight. Uh, let's pull it back just a little. I think right around, yeah, right around 5000 looks more accurate on my screen. So there that's done. And if I want to play with my skin tone, I'm going to go to the vibrance slider over here. You have your saturation and you have your vibrance. The saturation and vibrance, people get them confused. Saturation is giving you more intensity in your overall colors, overall hues of the frame. The vibrance is going to give you more intensity in the colors based on luminous, <clears throat> excuse me, based on luminosity. And most of the time it's targeting skin. Because if you're looking at a person and you move the vibrance, it's going to hit their skin tones. So I'm going to boost my vibrance here just a little. Like if I go a long way, that's what it that's what it looks like there. And that's totally not my skin. This is straight out the camera, but I just want to give myself a little more life and just boost it up like that. Actually, let me just show you the difference. This is saturation. If I boost saturation all the way up, this is what we get. And it's hitting the sweater, my face, trying to hit it. It's trying to hit everything, my teeth, everything. Take that off. And if I boost it all the way up for the vibrance, you notice it only hits certain areas of the sweater. And it definitely hit my face and it hit a little bit of my teeth. So that's the difference there. So I'm just going to push this up for Right about here should be good. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to just stick them down here in this chat. We don't necessarily have to talk about headshots, but 
that was what I had on my my mind today. And I figured I'd share because I have gotten questions in the past. So vibrance is good. Sharpness and clarity on this looks OK to me, but I could. Hmm, no, I won't touch that now. I'm going to use Photoshop for that. I think we're good to go on here. And also with this profile lens profile selection inside of Lightroom, sometimes that can make a difference. For this shot, you'll see that I use a 24 to 70 f 2.8. And each camera has its own profile. Some cameras have a different level of distortion, not cameras. Each lens has their own profile and some lenses have their different levels of distortion that can happen with your images when you capture them. So if right now, supposedly Lightroom is saying, hey, we're optimized for this particular lens. That's what that check mark is there for. I'm going to turn that check off just to show you what happens. And I bet what you'll see is like my nose will go in just a little bit like in Z space. It'll push back in. Um, let's see. Here we go. Yep. That's what it did. And I know that because I've seen that with this lens a lot. And to me, that looks more more like me. You know, so it depends on the person. It depends on um, the lens. If this were like a 16 to 35, I would highly recommend use the uh, profile corrections because by default, a wide angle lens like a 16 to 35, it does some crazy bowing. Uh, it tends to accentuate the nose and the eyes, you know, because it's that's that's the physics of that lens. But 24 to 7, you, you don't really need that. So I'm going to turn that off and then I'll go back up here. Just check this exposure one more time. Just like that. So for the most part, we're good to go, but we're not done. That's just getting exposure right. We need to get into the retouching side of things and you can do a lot of retouching here in Lightroom, but there's some other stuff that I do that Photoshop is the much better tool. So we're going to say edit in Photoshop and we're going to give that a second. You don't want to see all of that. So we can pop out of here. So anyway, I see folks in here. Thank you all for popping in. And again, welcome to uh, Ford. Happy Friday to you today. We're answering questions and talking pro headshots and anything else you want to ask. Just feel free. I see my man, Mr. Greg Coonrod popped in. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for being here. Everybody that's here, please um, feel free to drop your questions in the chat. Doesn't necessarily have to be about headshots, um, but drop them in the chat. If you uh, would hit like on the screen i'd appreciate that too so now photoshop is open let's pop back into photoshop okie dokie so what i like to do in photoshop when i'm dealing with pro portraits is get the skin ready to go do retouch it on the skin get rid of blemishes and things like that and the easiest way to do that is what's called frequency separation you get the high frequencies which are dealing with the really really fine details of the skin and then you get the low frequencies which are dealing more so with like the color tone and things like that and i have an action that i built that basically goes through and makes all of these different layers for me as part of my frequency separation process so i'll go ahead and hit play there and i'll walk you through what it's doing all right, so that's done and nothing changed on the screen. OK, so what it did over here on the right hand side of the layer panel, it created this first layer. This is my low frequency layer. I should label it there, but I. I know what that is, so but for you starting out, if you're new to this, you probably want to label it so you don't get confused. But I know what these two are just because I've been doing this for so long. So this is the low frequency layer that's highlighted. This is the high frequency layer that's highlighted there. OK, on that low frequency layer, if I turn off the top, it has added some Gaussian blur. OK, so you notice when I turned off this upper layer, it, you know, it goes from a, a sharper image to this 
semi blurry image. And if I click on this Gaussian blur effect, you see it's set to 5.4. And quite honestly, I think that might be a little bit high. So I'm going to dial it all the way back to zero. So let's zoom out a little bit just so you can see what's happening. I've been finding, at least for my face, anywhere between two and three radius for the Gaussian blur is, is okay. Because what happens if I go higher than that, I really look processed and I don't want to really look processed. There are going to be some instances you want to have your subject have a little bit more of the beautification look. People ask for that, you know, um, 99% of the posters and things you see in billboards and Hollywood stuff that you see, um, they're really beautified. So, but for me, for this, I don't want that much of an effect. So I'm going to stick it around to the point three and just hit okay. Ooh, good question in here. Good question in here. Whoops. And it still puts the live chat up here wrong. Why does it keep fumbling that thing like that? There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, this comes from hybrid media. Did you see that Canva bought affinity? Yeah, I did see that dude. And I got to tell you my initial thoughts on it because I haven't dug into it. I, I've been a little busy with some other personal stuff, <laughs> but I haven't dug into it. I do believe that that acquisition, you know, right off the top of my head, I'm thinking good for the customers. I, 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 I'm pretty sure this is, this is going to be a good thing for the customers um, and for the potential customers and for the customers that are trying to move away from Adobe. You know, I, I, I love options out there, but I don't know all of the details in there, but you know, when you think about the brands, you have the Adobe brand. Okay. And then you have, um, we have um, the Affinity brand. Then we have the Canva brand. People know Adobe, okay? And not just photographers know Adobe, just regular run-of-the-mill people out there in this world doing what they do. They, they, they know Adobe. They've heard of Adobe. Affinity, not so much. People know Canva. Regular run-of-the-mill folks know Canva. So those are two, two, uh, two of those three brands in there are pretty decent size and pretty good recognition. So what Canva is doing is pulling in affinity that has a ridiculously great product that competes with Adobe and in some instances do better than Adobe. I, I think this is a good thing because now there's going to be more, more eyeballs on these products in, in, and they're saying, you know what? We do have some options. That's the first thing that's in my head. So, yeah, I think it's a good thing. Time will tell. But that's a heck of a question. And I see Ozone Nightmares popped in here. Hey, brother, good to see you. He says, uh, Hybrid Funny, we talked about this on his show. Yeah, I was on his show. Um, and I believe it's going to publish today. So make sure you check out Ozone Nightmare and that podcast. Good stuff. Thanks for being here, brother. Good to see you. And Ozone, you know, the, you know the deal. Hit like button, please. And thank you. All right. So we're back in Photoshop. Um, let's see here. We have the two layers. And again, I said this is my low layer for blur and softness and handling color and things like that. So what I want to do now is I'll zoom in on the photo move around a little bit and I like to look at things like color, make sure color is okay on the skin. And the first thing that always pops up are eye bags. All right. And unfortunately there's not much you can do about it for people unless they wear makeup or you fix it in post because some people have eye bags. I've have, I've always had eyes that look like I'm sleepy. My grandmother used to always think I was sick for some reason because <laughs> she saw my eyes she's like are you okay and i'm like i'm fine she's like well your eyes look look sick or your eyes look sleepy no grandma that's just i have eye bags at a very very young age uh greg coonrod says in the chat headshot processing question does your workflow differ 
if your final deliverable is digital or print? And if so, how? Yeah, it does differ and it, and it only differs on the actual output, the export process of it. Um, because I'm shooting in a high resolution, high megapixel camera. So it's fine for, for print or digital. And if it's only going out for uh, digital, I, I'll ask them because you don't want to put these big ass images on a website. It'll slow your website down. So you just export to a smaller um, file size. All right. So again, I'm looking here at these eyes and those eye bags need to go away. What I like to do is try to blend the eye bag colors into the rest of my skin that's in the surrounding area to make it a little, little bit more natural. Oh, another good question. How many final images do you deliver for the headshots? That depends. <laughs> that's part of the negotiation process. Um, some people, you only need two headshots, one to two shots, because people are using them for profiles and things like that. And business cards and stuff like that. So you only need one or two. If they need more, there's there's a cost for that. So again, that's why I said at the beginning, doing headshots, especially on the corporate level, it should it should take no time to shoot them. Your time is going to be spent in setting up the scene and doing your posts. But the actual clicking of the camera should take you no time. All right. So good questions. Thank you. So what I want to do now is I'm going to add a new layer like so. And I'll just call this eye bags just for y'all's edification like that. Eye bags. And then I use the gradient tool here on my on my screen and I set up the gradient tool to to work with the foreground. All right. So I'm going to click on that. Go up here to basics foreground to transparent. Boom. OK, so right now my foreground colors is blue crap, which is totally wrong because that's based on a previous project. So I'll just do an eyedropper. So now I have an eyedropper color that's more of my skin. And I like to use this circular gradient and Photoshop has upgraded its gradient tools. It's really nice. But for this stuff, I like to use the old school classic gradient. You'll notice that right there in the upper left. So zooming in some more because you really should zoom in on this. Or if you have something like a Wacom Cintiq, this is really helpful. And then I just sample a color next to the eye bag and I just gently brush it in like that. Just to try to make it a little more natural. And you're probably thinking, holy crap, that looks like crap. <laughs> But trust me, this is part of the process. And do this a little more. Like that. So it's blending in. Something like that. And you can be quick and dirty on this, okay? Because you're working on a separate layer. All right. Oh, I see a super chat has come in. Hold on. Super chat. Oh, scroll it back. Oh, ozone. The only potential downside to the Canva deal is a move to subscription model. They've said for now it won't, but I'm sure it will eventually. That said, Adobe already does that, so no big deal. Damn good question, sir. Um, damn good point, too. Yeah, they all say that, so we'll see. Time will tell, but I like the idea of perpetual licenses. Uh, and thank you for the super chat, brother. I do appreciate that. Ford says, so if they want to do more, so if they want more, do you charge more? Yes. All of that is, yeah. When it comes to doing your quotes and your negotiation, your time is the, is, is, is what's important here. How much time am I spending on this? How much am I charging for my time as well as for my skill? So yeah, it, it, it costs more. All right. And Greg Coonrod says, do you have a preferred focal length for headshots? I'd assume something like 85 or 135. Boom. You nailed it. 85 mil. That is that is me 
for uh, headshots. I have an 85 mil prime 1.8 that I use old lens, but I freaking love it. <laughs> it just works. But I also have a 70 to 200 uh, 2.8. And those lenses are very, very different on how they handle the compression in the, the, in the background. So depends on what you want to do. Um, but my go to is definitely the 85. Definitely the 85. Good question. So now we're back to this here, this this mess on the screen, this blob, if you will. Uh, that looks bad. But again, it's on its own separate layer over here. So if I just turn it off like that, you wouldn't see it. But how do we fix this? Because I'm looking at it now on the regular screen. And yes, the color is different, but I don't have any of this texture like my other eye has. Pretty easy. Go over here to this fill option inside of Photoshop. And if you just dial that back, you still retain the color, but you get some more of your details to come back like that. So if I just took it all the way away, that's what it looked like originally. And if I just left it at 100, that's what my mess looks like. And then go back to here. Just dial it in slowly and you find that happy balance. And right about there looks pretty good to me, you know, just so I could still see my skin there, the skin texture there, but it doesn't have that dark tone. I see a good question here. Good chat comment. Hybrid says 50 millimeter and 85 are, are, are his favorite lenses. And the, the 50 mil, that's pretty common too, because your, our, our eyes, our eye focal length is pretty much a 50 millimeter focal length. And even down to the field of view and everything is pretty much a 50 millimeter focal length. And a lot of people love that. I like a 50 millimeter for like street photography and some product stuff. But again, that 85, there's something about how that background compression looks, you know, just looks so much better to me. Good point, sir. So now we did the eye bag over there. So we can do it again for this other eye. So I'm going to zoom in and get a sample and just color it in. Bring some of this here like that. All right, so it's a little more natural now. Like that. And you can just do it over and over till it feels right and looks right for you. So I'm going to zoom out and I see that there's a couple mistakes there, which I did on purpose. Um, I went a little too far on this eye. So when worse comes to worse, you can erase it or nine times out of 10, a good old layer mask will fix it. All right. So I'm going to hit B for my brush tool and make sure it's set to black. And then I make sure the brush is 0% hardness like so. All right. And then I just dab it here. This is when I need my stylus <laughs> so much easier with the stylus there. So now that looks better. Cause so I went too far over my eyes there. All right, so now let's zoom out, take a look. Not bad, not bad. Change this feel just slightly there. So now again, this was working on the color tones here. So I need to move this layer up like that. There we go. I had it under the wrong layer. Now we got that. So that's before that's after looking good. Now this layer here, this is the high frequency layer. This is the layer that you want to use for going in and cleaning up little skin blemishes and things like that. So I'm going to hit J on my keyboard. 
or just go over here to the spot healing brush tool like that. And I'm going to zoom in and I'll take out little blemishes. I got a lot of blemishes, but I don't think they all need to be removed. The spot on my nose got to go get rid of it. Check around on my head, this little tag there. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And just weave around this gray nose hair. Get rid of that. Gone. You know, and if you zoom in really close, you'll see way more than you want to. So you don't necessarily have to zoom in super close. Just it depends on the model. You know, for me, I don't need everything wiped away. So I'm just sort of doing a quick and dirty look like right there. Get rid of that down here in my neck because I didn't shave. Let's get rid of these little blemishes like that. And some of this stuff with the next step that I'm going to do will eliminate that stuff, eliminate these blemishes, too. All right. No, let's get rid of that, too. Looking good. All right. And again, this is just a good old creator office hours here, hanging out, taking questions and comments and answering them as best I can while I sit here and work on a headshot. And hopefully this information will help you for your next headshot photo shoot like so. All right. So got that done. OK, so blemishes are squared away for the most part. The next step is when we get into the actual beautification, if you will. <laughs> so we will take this layer going back to our, our um, low frequency layer. And we're going to put a layer mask on it. And then we're going to grab our mixer brush. Now, see your regular brush tool is just B on the keyboard, which is what you see now. Like if I wanted to just paint black, I could. But I'm on a layer mask and you're not going to really see anything there. So let me undo that. But I want to select the mixer brush option under here. So you're still on your brush tool, but this this is now your mixer brush and you'll see the icon has changed over here on the uh, left. And at the top, you got a couple different settings. You want to make sure this little panel is transparent like that. And then this little icon, you click that, that makes sure it's transparent. This is basically for clean brush settings. So let's make my brush bigger. And this is where the fun begins. And again, if you have a Wacom tablet, I highly recommend using one of the one of those for these types of tasks. You don't have to have a Cintiq to do this. You can use a uh, like an Intuos. I got one right here. This on my desk and I pull it out. Let's see. I wonder if I could show it to you on the screen. Did I turn that other camera on? I did not. All right, sorry, I didn't turn that other camera on. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. It's still not on. Well, I do have my webcam. So let's do this. We'll go to the webcam here. Oh, that. That camera didn't want to work. So this is a Wacom Cintiq right here. Sorry for the vibration. And I literally just sit it right in front of the keyboard in front of the screen. This is a tiny little stylus that comes with it. And I just put it right in front of the screen so it's more natural. And as I'm moving it around on, um, on this pad, the mouse cursor is going to move. And you can go in and make different settings for this tablet. But I highly recommend one of these for doing retouching um, or doing just selective adjustments, even on like landscape photos. These styluses, stylus, I don't know how you say the plural of it, are so much more accurate and give you a little bit more control than a mouse, in my opinion. So that is a Wacom 
into us. I will put a link in the uh, video description to the one that I use or because I actually have a couple because <laughs> I take them, take them on the road when I travel to because they're just super convenient. So let's go back. Here we go. Uh, what's this comment from Esposito and Ozone Nightmare? Buying a nose hair trimmer was one of those wonderful, isn't it great getting older moments? Sure. <laughs> yeah, I got one too. And um, man, it's crazy. I have to use that for my nose and my ears. And it's like, damn, I, I never saw this coming. But they are, they go a long way. <laughs> Hilarious. So I'm zoomed in on going to zoom in just a touch on this image. Not too much, but just a little. Get back to Photoshop. There we go. Like that. And then just move this down. And so now again, we have the mixer brush going. And what the mixer brush is going to do is basically mix these colors. And it's while it's mixing those colors, it's going to work on changing the texture just a little bit and smooth things out. So with the stylus, I'm going to brush along the contour contours of my head and just gently brush like so. Why is that not working? I'm on the right layer. Or maybe it is and I can barely see it. Yeah, it's working. I see it now. There we go. And you can see it's just smoothing it out ever so slightly. Like so. And then I come down to bridge the nose like that. So let's turn this off. Okay. I'm going to push this blur up just a little. Because remember I said five was too much. So let's try three. Okay. Layer mask. And just brush it in. And just sort of brush around the, te the, the cheeks here. And the main thing is just to use this process to... Uh, Make sure you are <clears throat> going with the contours of the face because it'll it'll look way more natural. Is that why this isn't working? My layer mask is on the wrong one. I bet that's what it is. I should pay attention. There we go. Like so. And switch back here. Okay, hold on. And actually, I'm going to combine my eye bag layer because it's good to go. So let's merge that down. Just get that out of the way. Excellent. There. And just gently brush. So now, if I zoom out, like that. And let's take a look at before and after. So I'm going to these layers that I've been working on, I'll put them in a group so I can get a quick look at the process. Turn them off. Yeah, not enough change there. So what's going on? So let's push a little more. None of my changes are sticking. That's a problem. No, I didn't want to rasticize just yet. <laughs> there. Have to make sure you own your layer mask, Ant. Like that. Why is my mask not working? It's not brushing. Note, ideally you would see the effects over here. So let's go ahead and rasticize it. Like 
that. Or rasterize, not rasterize, rasterize. This is really bizarre, gents and ladies. Did I just break my, my Photoshop? Because <laughs> none of these things are working now. What the heck? Gotta love it for uh, live demos when the app just stops working. Very bizarre. I'll try it on this layer, even though I don't highly recommend that. So bizarre. All right. Well, since this isn't working, I'm going to use the regular brush tool on the previous layer. I don't recommend this way, but it does work. So you brush with black on your layer mask like that. Just lightly. And it's going to give the same effect. But doing it on the other layer. Makes the tones look a little bit better. So I make this brush really big and I'm just going to brush very softly across my head like so. Like that. There. So that's the start. So now if I turn this off, you'll see a difference if you just look at my forehead. Like that. And you can see I overdid it. it went too much. And it's because that this layer doesn't work as well as the mixer brush should work. So I'm just going to erase some of what I did like so by painting in white like that and I see uh, super chat has come in uh, right where'd he go uh oh there it is on the last Adobe survey thank you to ozone nightmare for the super chat on the last Adobe survey I did my suggestion was I did one of my suggestions was a transfer button to move an image seamlessly between Photoshop and Illustrator. What type of function for Photoshop? Ah, well, we do that. That's how I actually got into um, Photoshop from Lightroom because inside of Lightroom, if I cl click here and show you on my screen, you literally just right click and say edit in right there. And I say Photoshop and it'll pop me right into it with that particular file. And then when I'm done, I'm going to hit save and it'll take me back to Lightroom. And you'll see that momentarily. Good question. And then some more chat came in here with some of this chatter here. I see. Could you achieve similar results with whoops, I screwed screwed it up there. Could you see could you achieve similar results with a lens filter? like one of the black pro mist. Um, the pro mist filter. All right. You could, but that is going to affect the whole daggum image. When you're using those pro mist filters, at least my preferred use case for one of those is more so for creating a bit of a bloom effect in the background and with the lighting, because it's softening everything. The, the subject in front of the lens, they're going to be soft. And if you're trying to have some detail in them, it's really difficult to add detail in post. You know what I mean? And it because it's going to look really artificial. So I don't necessarily recommend Pro Mist with a headshot unless you want them to look soft overall. OK, uh, because most of the time with the headshots, you want people's eyes to stand out. You know, you want their eyes to stand out. You want their teeth to stand out. So you have to consider that when using filters. Uh, Demancy says, did you use a reflector for this shot? Was it curved? I did not use a reflector. Um, this was literally just one big light source on one side of, of the room, which is a big sliding door. No lights, nothing, just that's all natural light coming into that room because it's a huge slide and door window. Uh, reflector would be ideal to use up under my chin, like a 
like if I was to hold a board up under my chin like that, and that would bounce some light to fill in here on my neck. Typically, that's what you would do for headshots, but I didn't re really think it was necessary for this one because it was quick and dirty. Good question. Uh, let's see. Ah, nose on nightmare is found that yeah, Photoshop gets weird for him too. Live. Miko, hey Miko, good to see you. The demo gremlins are alive. Yeah, I don't know what happened there, but we're pushing through. And so far it's working with my alternative method. So again, if we take a look here, I did a, a bit of a layer mask on my high frequency layer, which is now labeled as eye bags, but that's the high frequency layer because I want to reveal the texture and the color blend of the low frequency layer. And so I brushed along here on my forehead to sort of help clean up the skin and clean up some of the blemishes. And I'm going to do the same thing again along my forehead with a large soft brush. And you have pressure sensitivity when you're using a stylus. So I'm just barely tapping. Whoops. And I'm tapping in the wrong color. I should be using black, not white. So just barely tapping in to soften it up some. And now I'll zoom in and we'll come over here to my cheeks, change the brush size down and just keep going with the contours of my face like that. Just barely brushing it in. Bridge my nose. Brush it in just barely is when you see this done on the nose, it really stands out because that nose is catching the light. Really, 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 <laughs> really catching the light. So don't overdo it on the nose. And just brush a little there. And I mean, I barely brush. You can see the detail just went the way, went away slightly. Somebody must be out there trying to make a delivery. I hear dogs barking or it may be a solicitor. All right, so there, let's zoom out. Let's take a look, see how this is looking overall. So that's the regular view with the retouching. I think my forehead is still a little too much overdone. So I'm gonna go back to my forehead with the brush, big brush, and gonna paint with white on that mask. Just barely, just barely like that. So now let's do a before and after. So this is before and this is after. Yeah. And it's subtle is it's, it's subtle differences, but I think this is a much better look. Okay. Still just a little overdone, just a little. So I'm going to go with white again and just dab. Just barely dab on my forehead and then double check. Yeah, see that's, that's looking a little more natural now. And I'll do the same on the cheeks as I went a little overboard on the cheeks too. So just dab white on the cheeks. Nose looks good. Okay. Yeah, much better, much better. All right. Oh, thank you. As long as the instructions are still good, even if the app fails, this is actually really useful. I don't do this type of, what do you say? I don't, dang, I cannot read today. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do this type of touch up often, but good to know how you do it. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it can take some time, my man. It can take some time, lots of trial and error. And hopefully this is helping everyone else too. So for the most part, this is good to go. I can do everything else inside of Lightroom, but I wanted to do that frequency separation in here. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll go back to Lightroom. So I'm going to hit save on my keyboard here. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that there. Hit save and it's saving thinking. See down there it's thinking. And I'm going to go ahead and jump into Lightroom and you'll see it change on the screen. 
in a few seconds. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> you can do it. There it goes. Loading. And you see it made it a TIFF file up here and gave it a whole new name and so forth. So now this is what it looked like before. Okay. And this is the retouch side. So skin looks good, but there's some things that we can still handle. And a lot of things that you want to look at is teeth and eyes. And then for me, I have this beard going, so I could even retouch my beard some. So the magical tools of, of uh, selective adjusting inside of Lightroom using your brush tools and all of these different masks that they have. And this AI stuff works well too. So if I just click on person, you know, it says the entire person, or if I just want the eyebrows, that's there, the lips, the teeth, it does a good job at all. If you want to use all of that stuff, you can, I don't care to at this moment. So I'm going to hit cancel there. I'm going to first do a zoom in on this like that and move around. And let's work on the teeth. And I like to do this stuff manually. And again, having a stylus helps. So I'm just going to create a new brush. And I'll drop a little point here like so. And I'm going to brush onto my teeth. And for the most part, my teeth are not horrible from a color standpoint. But every now and then you want to whiten them. So I want to brush on here. And if I hit O on my keyboard, you'll see that it's got a little bit of a red hue. And because I'm lightly brushing and my flow is low, let's push this flow all the way up over here on the right. We'll just do a full flow. So now it's brushing onto my teeth. Those are going to be the affected areas of my next adjustment. Okay. So if I hit O to take that mask away, uh, take the little red away, I could see what happens. So I'm going to take the exposure and just push the exposure up some. I'm going to take the saturation and remove saturation, remove any color. And that'll make my teeth start to look a little more white. Take the shadows, push the shadows up like so. And if you want to go extreme, yeah, you can go extreme, but I don't recommend that. That's horrible. <laughs> so just make it subtle, just a subtle tooth brushing. And they have presets in here. You know, there's this teeth whitening preset. You can use those, but I like to just sort of dial things in myself. So I'm going to take the contrast back there. So that's the teeth. That's done. Next, I like to take a look at the eyes. Add a little whitening to the uh, sclera of the eye. So we'll do a new brush like so. And essentially do the same thing. Just paint in the whites of the eyes like that. Now, I didn't need this to be white, so I'm going to erase that part like so. So whatever excess you have, you just erase it. Just hold down the option or alt key on your keyboard and you get the minus symbol on your cursor. Just brush it in there. Do the same for the other eye. Like that. And you can do this with a mouse. But I promise you, spend 60 bucks on a Wacom into his tablet. Life changing. So now let's whiten my eyes. So that's going way too far. Don't want to do that. Style it back some. Just a little and take the saturation out like that. <laughs> Live chat says how much, if any, can you do about the reflection in the glasses? Uh, in this case, it, that's a whole different tutorial, honestly. And nowadays it's a lot easier because you have um, 
AI and stuff like that. Why did it, I didn't want to do those moderation stuff. Stop that. You have the AI stuff inside of Photoshop where you can do a selection and it'll help fill it in. I used to have to do um, clone stamping and all of that. Come in here and clone it out certain areas where the reflections are. Um, it's funny. Talked about this earlier in the text messages. <laughs> what you used to have to do. That's a good question, Greg. What you used to have to do with this, if you weren't worried about if you weren't trying to deal with this in post, which I highly recommend, you don't ever want to think about, I'll just fix it in post. Never think that. OK, that's going to make you lazy and a shit tastic photographer. When you're dealing with someone with glasses, hopefully your camera is locked off on a tripod. So the camera's not going to move. OK, then you want to make sure your subject is not going to move. What I'd like to do is have them take their glasses off and just and then get in position and they can just hold their glasses in their hands out of frame. You snap the photograph, tell them not to move, walk over to them, ask them not to move and ask them to hand the glasses to you. And that's easy to do. You can I got the stylus in my hand now and I can hand it to you without looking away from the camera. Right. So they'll hand them to you. You take the glasses and then you ask them. Can I put your glasses on for you? Then you take the glasses. Don't let them move. And you just slide the glasses onto their face into position without them moving. Take the shot again. Next, you bring those images into Photoshop and you want to do some blending and masking and it'll help you get rid of the glare. So. But again, you need to do that stuff with the consent of your subject because you don't want to just be touching people at random. You know what I'm saying? Be a daggone pro. Good question there. Uh, next, he says, um, the man says, never consider widening the eyes. I got to write this stuff down. <laughs> well, that is the beauty of YouTube. You have a playlist right here on my channel, my man. So hopefully this stuff helps you out. All right. So let's pop back in here. So we did a whitening of the eyes. You know, that was that was the before. So let's bring them up just a little bit like that. So the eyes are good. Perfect. Now I want to do another mask regarding the eyes. Yes, they're behind glasses. Yes, there's a glare. So let's fix that. So I'm going to brush onto my eyes. We're going to bring out the eyes a little bit. So I'm just going to brush across them like that. Very simple. Like that. And the clarity tool down here is a really, really good way to add contrast and detail simultaneously. So let's take that away. Take the little red mask away and I'm going to adjust the clarity and watch what happens. See, it's adding contrast, but it's also giving you a touch of sharpening. So if I go too far, that's what happens. OK, so just go back. And just start from zero and then just move it ever so slightly. And it just brought my eyes out a little bit more like I have eyeliner on. That stuff goes a long freaking way, long way. And I'm just going to brush a little more over here like that to make sure it's really standing out. And if I hit O on my keyboard, I could see where I overdid it. So let's erase where I overdid it. I don't need it right there. I need it more so around my eyelids and my eyelashes. Don't need it here. Like that. Let's take that away there. That looks way better. Let me zoom out. You, you'll see a difference when I zoom out too. So let's do um, like here. So this is off and that's on. Just watch the eyes. That's off. And that's on. And it's subtle. It's not overdone. I could really crank it up if I want to. And it looks like a weirdo, but just keep it subtle. Just like if you're working with a makeup artist, makeup is subtle, you know. That's why they get paid what they, they're paid, because it doesn't look like it's there. And lastly, let's take a look at some of um, the texture on my face. I'm going to do another mask. 
play around with my beard. It's growing out. It's got the fuzzy Brillo pad look. Why not take advantage of it artistically? So I'm just going to brush it in. I don't want to use this damn mouse. <laughs> Let's go back to using my stylus. Like so. And this is rough. Very rough. And I'm going to erase over here because I went too far over there. So I'm going to erase there. Like that. Erase there. Erase there. There. All right. So now let's again, just subtle contrast and texture. The clarity side here. There we go. Brings it out a little bit more. And if I want to make it really sharp, just add texture like that. But that's too much in my opinion. I mean, it's clear, it's pretty, but I think that's a little too much. So let's just dial it back some. There. All right. I think that works. So this is a before, after we brought it into Photoshop, that's the before. And that's the final retouch in there. And that is really, really quick and dirty. See the beard stands out more, the eyes stand out more, the teeth are a little bit whiter, but not super white. So much more life in this version of the shot. Now I mean, and this is what it looked like from the very beginning. Nose hair. <laughs> That's the first thing I see is the nose hair. And now this is the final. Cool. I think that works. And again, quick and dirty. I could spend a lot more time on it, but I want, but I hope this helps you um, with your next project and, you know, help get you going down a path of efficiency when it comes to shooting headshots and processing them as a pro. All right. That's going to do it, folks. We've been here. Oh, went a little over an hour. Hope y'all didn't mind that. Sorry about that. Any other questions before we get out of here? What are you all working on? I have, I need to look at my, where's my phone? I need to look at my calendar. I, I have a job interview today, a part-time job interview sometime today. Yeah, that's at three o'clock my time. <laughs> Craig Hoonrod says, <laughs> "How do you make it look so easy?" Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I make it look easy, brother. But thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh man, yeah, I'm gonna do that interview this afternoon, and then the rest of the evening, rest of the afternoon, I'm just gonna watch basketball. I don't have any baseball games scheduled to shoot anything like that. So, which is good and bad. The good part of it is my knees will thank me, you know, cause I shoot for my knees when I'm doing these sports photography sessions. Um, bad news is I'll miss out on a couple, you know, a couple sales, but it's give and take. All right. Any other questions before we get out of here? And by the way, I've been sure sent me the SM seven DB microphone. You guys may know that I previously used the how PR 40 because I like the way the how makes my voice sound And this one. Um, this is a different version of the sure SM seven seven SM seven B this that's the original one that most people use SM seven B. This is their SM seven DB, uh, where it gives you some additional features such as some EQ options on the bottom of it equalizer, as well as some additional gain because traditional the, the, the other one, you had to buy a cloud lifter. That's another couple hundred dollars, which would boost the signal coming in. Because the SM7B, it was just a little too quiet. 
you know it, it's it's a it was a good sounding mic but it's just a little too quiet and most of the time when you saw people using the sm7b if they didn't have a cloud lifter they were talking into it like this they were literally eating the microphone so this one i don't have a cloud lifter on it because they already have an additional gain increase here that i just flipped it on and my signals look good i still had to eq it a little bit to make it sound more like me but this is definitely an improvement um over the sm7b definitely an improvement uh greg says thanks ants for 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 taking time to hang out with us <laughs> best of luck in the interview thank you man i appreciate you all right i'm gonna get out of here um have yourselves a good fine end of the the week and get yourself ready for a good weekend um please 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 share the content with any and everybody that you know it does mean a lot to me and it helps me out um make sure you check out the podcast uh shared some good some i ain't gonna say good information but we just recently shared some information on the podcast that um pretty personal stuff and so yeah check that out emperor.com slash podcast or right here on youtube there's a playlist dedicated to the podcast so check that out or just look for everyday people with Aunt Pruitt and Phoebe Pruitt on your podcast app of choice. Uh, thank you for all of the Patreon folks. Uh, actually, I can give you your your flowers right now. Thank you, Patreon folks, for being there. Uh, go to patreon.com slash Aunt Pruitt if you're curious or interested in supporting us there. Um, lastly, let me just say this again. Do something nice for yourself. We have a lot of people in this world that are just struggling with depression and anxiety and all kinds of mental health stuff. And in my opinion, a lot of it boils down to we don't take the time to take care of ourselves. We spend more time taking care of other people when we should take some time to do something nice for ourselves. And I know I do that every damn day. And it's, it can be as simple as having a cigar something so do something nice for yourself all right and then go do something nice for someone else two things they go hand in hand all right do something nice for yourself do something nice for someone else have a much happier and peaceful weekend all right take care folks create and dominate see you